Well, hello everyone, and welcome to our Let's Play of... Dark Sun, The Shattered Lands. Dark Sun is a role-playing game for the PC developed by Strategic Simulations in 1993. And I have a lot of fond memories of this game. I used to play this quite a bit as a kid. Now we're about to get the opening cinematic. Kind of gives us an idea of what happened here in the world of Dark Sun. So we can see the planet was once lush and beautiful and green. But then terrible things happened. An ap apocalyptic war of magic turn this beautiful planet into a dead, barren wasteland. I think the world in Dark Sun is called Athos. Once lush and beautiful world of Dark Sun is now bleak and deadly. Sorcerer kings rule the city-states, crushing life and freedom in their quest for power. And Dross, slaves feed the power of sorcerer kings in an endless dance of death. Now, I'm not quite sure if that's how you pronounce that, because I'm an idiot. And I see D R A J, I think draw. In fact, this game is full of words that are hard for me to pronounce, but we're gonna have fun and play it anyways. So here is our title screen, where we can start our game, create our characters, load a game, or exit the dots. Now if we just hit start game, we'll start with default pre-generated characters. We are instead gonna click on create characters and make ourselves a party of four. So we've got these four windows right here. And if we click the right mouse button, we have the option to make a new character, add a character, or cancel. Now, of course, clicking new allows us to make a new character altogether. Clicking add, though, allows us to look at some of the characters that I have made, and we can pick and choose from them. Now, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to take the time to make new characters. So here's our character creation screen, and if you've watched me play some of the other D&D role-playing games, some of this should seem familiar to you, while well, some of this is new. Right here we have our character portrait and our in-game sprite. Our class list is over here, and you can see there are a few new ones. We have Druid, which is very similar to a cleric, although clerics venerate gods and deities, druids tend to venerate either nature itself, concepts of nature, or the elements. Our next new class over here is the Gladiator. The Gladiator is very similar to Fighter, although if I remember correctly, they get benefits of improved AC over time. Now, Preserver, that looks new, but Preserver is the Dark Sun equivalent of a mage. And our next one is the Psionist. Psionists are a special type of uh, caster class, whereas Mages take magical energy around the world, around just around them, and shape it to their whims. And clerics and druids are divine conduits for the magic of their gods and their elemental forces. A psionist uses the energy inherent in their minds to create effects. Which we can actually look at some of them down here. You have kinesis, which is the movement of things with your mind, metabolics, which is the augmentation and adjustment of the body, and telepathy, which is communication through the mind. Now, this game also introduces us to a few new races. Now, of course, we have our traditional male and female humans, male and female dwarfs, elves, Half-Elves, but our new race is the Half-Giants, male and female. Half-Giants are the magical concoction of mixing humans and giants together to get a, well, a half-breed. You get a half-giant here, larger, stronger than your average human, but not as large and powerful as a full-blooded giant. Have you seen our Halflings? Although, halflings in Dark Sun and Athos are not the, 
the happy, joyous hobbits that we're used to. These are wild, savage, cannibalistic humanoids. And here is probably one of my favorite uh, new races, and this is Mull. A Mull is the very mundane union of a human and a dwarf. And all Mulls are male. And they're also born sterile. I don't know what it is about these characters that I find so interesting, but ever since playing these games, I've always had some sort of appreciation for Mulls. There's something about them I really like. I had a nice, I had a really nice uh, tabletop game of D&D where I played a Mull cleric. That turned out pretty well. And finally, we have the Thrykeen. Thrykeen are big mantis people. Now, in other D&D games, you may see them as mantis warriors, and they're usually green. Uh, the more traditional Dark Sun Thrykeen is yellow because, you know, horrible desert wasteland. Although there are jungles and forests to be found in certain parts of the world of Dark Sun, and I think the Thrykeens are, are green in that part of the world. Now, I want to use these new races, but first things first, we are going to make ourselves a half-elf. Because I want to have a preserver on our party. Because preservers are the spellcasters, they're the mages. Now, in this game, more so than any other D&D game, I really take advantage of dual wielding. That's using a weapon in both hands. And by normal D&D rules, the ranger is the best at doing this. So I'm going to take advantage of this and make a preserver a ranger. But I'm also going to throw a thief on there as well. Because there are a handful of situations where having a thief is invaluable. All right, let's look down here at clerical spheres. In Dark Sun, the druids, the clerics, the rangers, they don't venerate a particular god. They, they dedicate themselves to elemental spheres, and they are the four classic elements of air, earth, fire, and water. When you pick one of those spheres, it will influence what weapons you can use and what spells you can learn. Now because, what is this? Kamar here is a ranger thief, as well as a preserver. I don't think he's going to be really limited in his weapons choice. Since he's also a Thief Ranger, I think we'll stick with the Air Sphere. You also see we have this button here for View Psionics. In Dark Sun, all characters, well all characters that we're going to create at any rate, are innately psionic to some degree. And they can pick one of the three psionic disciplines. This will also influence uh, the psionic powers they can get. Now, I think we're going to pick... Telepathy. Now, let's take a quick look at a few more things. This die here will change our stats. That will randomly generate them. Now, because I'm a dirty cheat, we don't have to sit here and just keep clicking this die over and over again. We're just going to max out our stats. And you probably have already noticed that these character stats are much higher than what we've seen in other D&D games. That's because Dark Sun is a brutal, harsh world, and you've got to be tougher and stronger than normal to get by. So I'm going to max out all our stats. And Kamar here has a very good dis distribution of stats. I'm also going to max out his hit points. You may notice that there are two sets of numbers here. Numbers on top are your hit points. Hit points are, of course, how much physical abuse you can take before you pass out or potentially die. The numbers beneath it are our psionic power points. That's the... That's the... Uh, what, what's a good word for it? That's the pool of points we have to perform psionic powers. Unlike spell casting, where it's slots per spell level, psionic powers draw from a pool of points. And when you run out of the pool of points, you can't use your psionic powers. And different psionic powers cost a different amount of points. We can also change our alignment here. But right now we can only pick between good. Neutral good, chaotic good. That's because, as a preserver, we have to pick from a good alignment. Because preservers in Dark Sun are the good mages, while defilers are the evil mages. 
And because we're part thief, we can't go lawful. So Kamar is done. And we can also get a look at some of Kamar's stuff here. He currently has a bow and a longsword. We can look more in depth at his inventory, but we'll do that later. Another thing to note, his ranger class here is blue. That color blue indicates that he has chosen the air sphere. As we pick, as we create more characters, their spheres will change depending on whether we choose air, earth, fire, water. Let's make our next character. Now, moles are always male, and Thrykeens are always female. And we've got one male half elf, so why don't we make a female half giant? Fontora. Now. Now if I pick Ranger, I can pick to be a Psionist or a Cleric. So let's make her a Ranger Psionist. Now, as a Psionist, she's going to have access to all three Psionic Disciplines. And unlike other characters that just have some inherent Psionic ability, she will have the potential to learn a multitude of Psionic powers. In fact, they learn them very similar to the way mages do. Now, Psionist Ranger. What sphere should her Ranger class take? I think we're going to go with Fire. Fire is a fairly offensive one. Uh, chaotic Good is fine. And we are again going to pump up her stats. She can get her stats, her strength stat, up to 24, which is tremendously high. In 2nd edition D&D, that's equivalent to being as strong as a storm giant. Although her dex is only going to get up to 15. Yeah, only going to get up to 15, the poor thing. A con can get up to 22, which is actually pretty high. Intelligence will only go up to 15, though. Wisdom is stuck at 17. And Charisma is also going to go to 17. And we are going to max out her hit points at 44. Her equipment is the same as Kamar's. Or Hamar's. Zantora. You see, her Ranger class is red for being a Fire Sphere. Alright, now let's make a mull. Now, this poor mull cannot be a ranger. So, you will be a fighter. Now, I'm trying to remember if the Thrykeen can be Druid Ranger. Nope. They can be Ranger Cleric. So you're going to be Fighter Druid. And I think we'll make your Sphere Earth. Hmm, and what? Uh, you know what? We'll keep Kinesis as your Psionic Discipline. And Holton is your name. Balls can get pretty darn strong too. He's got physical stats that can rival the giants. Let's max out your hit points at 30. And now we're going to make our Thrykeen. Our Thrykeen will be a Ranger Cleric. Now one thing I didn't mention about Thrykeens is they have extra limbs. You can see they got four arms here, so that means they're going to get extra attacks. See, damage times four, 1d4 plus one. Additionally, Thrykeens can also bite, and when they bite, they can potentially poison somebody and put them to sleep. So, what do we got here? Tear Cap, or Kirk Cap. Okay, so we got you as a Cleric Ranger. We're going to make your sphere water. 
we're gonna make your psionic discipline metabolics. I like to take all the characters that are not psionics and have each one of them pick a different discipline. That's just the way I like to do it, so that way I have access to as many different abilities as possible. Your stats are gonna get maxed out too. Right. And what about your hit points? 28. Alright, we got our party. Now that we're all done, we're going to return the game. We're going to start game. By the order of the mighty and omnipotent king, Tectile. That's the name I got no clue how to pronounce. All slaves fit to carry a sword shall fight in the arena. Death shall be the gladiator's payment for weakness. Let the games begin! That's exactly how our game is going to start. We are going to take control of our party, and we are just thrown immediately in the gladiatorial arena. There's no backstory about how we got there, or anything like that, or even how we came together. Just get in the pit and fight. Alright, so here is our game screen. We are unfortunately not going to be able to do much. This day the mage Selgor will battle a fearsome rampager. Watch and enjoy! Do not worry, Mar. Your turn will come soon. Stand back and watch the battle. So there's a Defiler. We've mentioned that Defilers are the evil versions of wizards in the world of Dark Sun. And i play this game a bunch of times. This Defiler has never once survive this encounter. I don't even know if it's possible. But that right there, that black crab looking thing, that's a Rampager. That's one of the biggest, baddest monsters you're gonna find in the game of Dark Sun. And there goes our poor Defiler. Gladiators step forward into the arena. Alright, now we have control of the game. There's our character right there, Hamar. And that kind of white pointer, well, it's a pointer, and it's how we interact with the world. If we click somewhere, we'll just walk over there. We also walk around using the directional keys as well. Now, if we right-click, the cursor changes to an arrow or a sword, depending. These are our combat options. In this case, we could fire at the gate. We're not going to do that. This is a good way to start battle or just to attack things, even to destroy objects and items. If we right click again though, we get the eye icon. This lets us examine things or talk to other characters. And if we click on ourselves, it takes us to our view character screen. And since I'm in the view character screen, down here we have our view inventory button, our cast spells button, and our view effects button. <clears throat> excuse me, view current spell effects. Our inventory is quite sparse right now, even between characters. In fact, poor Kirktap over here only has his throwing chakra. So, once we move past this gate, we're going to get our first fight. And right now we only have one character on the screen. But, we can change that. If I press the 5 button, the 5 key, all our party appears. And I can also cycle through who's the leader by pressing their corresponding buttons. 1, 2, 3, 4, and back to 1. Who the leader of our party is will oftentimes have effects in the game. Like what happens when we talk to characters, and if we notice things or can interact with the environment in special ways. Now, since everybody's on a screen, we're going to cast a spell. We're going to have our cleric friend here cast blessed on, Bless on us. Now here's his spell list. Unlike other D&D games where we have to take our time to prepare spells beforehand, 
we just have a list of spells we can cast from any time we like. Now we can also switch the level of spells here, but right now we can only cast level 1. We can even toggle between spells and psionics. But we're going to start by blessing ourselves. Alright, let's go out into the arena. Citizens of Dra, before you is a handful of gladiators, watch and be entertained as they fight to the death with the denizens of our land. So as soon as the arena announcer here is done talking, enemies are going to jump out from the left. So we're going to rush over to the right. So over to the right are some things we want to grab. Behold the gift of your king, Tectaluktitle. Vicious defenders of Dra, the gift of battle and death. Monster Trainer, release your horde. Now, I just happen to know that there's things over here anyways. But if we press O, we can get an overview of the map. And that flashing blue dot is us. While these flashing red and yellow ones are other characters. In this case, those are the enemies. Now, right now I have the combat icon up. So the game is paused. But if I go back to the white cursor, they're going to start moving again. I want to rush over here, because we can grab items off these bodies. When we examine an item, we'll pick it up, and then we move it around the screen. Then we just click on the character we want to give it to. Like this body has a pair of boots. We're going to give them to our preserver. Nope, I guess I gave them to our giant. You're going to put those boots on. And you are going to use this Githka. Also a body up here. What a club. Now this club I am going to give to our giant. Because she is going to fight with a sword and a club. And since we're also over here... There's a person we can talk to. A tied up prisoner, level 5. I... I... Who are you? I'm Hamar. Ugh, I'm so thirsty. Help me. Where can we get water? Help me, please. Should I untie you? Yes! I'll free you. You cut him from his bonds. Now he falls to the ground. Oh, uh, help, water, just a little. Help me, please. Uh, well, we know this guy needs water, but we have enemies about ready to jump on us. So we're going to strike preemptively. We're going to throw a curse on them. Now, those grayish dots there show the area of effect of our spell. While that rectangle is showing the enemies that will be affected by the spell. And that starts combat. Now we can move around combat either with the directional keys or by clicking. We'll have Kamar move over here. And then we can right click to go to our combat icon. Now he has a ranged weapon. And that enemy is close enough to use, so we're going to click on the enemy and fire arrows. Ah, well, we missed. Alright, Zantora. Such a poor quality creature. A child could kill them. Yeah, the announcer is going to have things to say over the course of playing the game. All right, Kirk Tap. Now Kirk Tap can move 15, as opposed to the other characters who you saw can move 12. So you're going to rush up to this slig, and try to beat it this mission. Same thing with you, Holton. Ooh, good hit. Um, now that screamer beetle use some sort of special power on us. So we're going to try to put that thing down before we're going to do any more harm.
Mar is our mage, so let's cast a spell. The old mage standard magic missile. Attention gladiators, go back to the pens to heal your wounds. The citizens of Drah grow impatient with delays. And the crowd throws money down to us. Depending on how well we do in the pit, the crowd may react differently. Right now, they're kind of neutral, so they just threw a little bit of money down to us. But they could be over, over excited with our uh, battle and cheer and chant our name and throw down tons of cash. Other times, they could be flat out bored and fall asleep. All right. Well, citizens of Draw, these pathetic, wretched, sorry excuses for gladiators are not our only intent. Don't worry. Real warriors will be fighting later today. Now we could yell something back at the announcer. We talk to the announcer, we could be insulting towards him, at which point he'll demand more monsters attack us. If we insult the king, he'll demand that the most powerful monsters come out and attack us. Or we could kind of um, be complimentary and he'll just be like, whatever, he doesn't really care. So, no, well yeah, there we go, you're the best announcer I've ever seen. Well thanks. Alright, let's grab this money real quick, because if we take too long, they're going to send out more monsters to fight us. Well, we see another tied up person. Let's go talk to them. And let's switch back to having you as our leader. Help me, please. I'll untie you. His body falls to the ground lifelessly. There is nothing on the body. Unfortunately, he didn't survive. Now, what about this vulture? He's anticipating lunch. Well, sorry, Vulture, you're going to be lunch. Hamar hits it so hard, he knocks its feathers off. And now we have a plucked Vulture. Alright, let's get out of here. Well, now that we've gone back through the gate, it's been closed, and we cannot get back out. Our only option is to go further into the slave pens. But, we are getting ever so close to the 30-minute mark. And I think we're going to save the game here. So, let's click on our options and go to the game menu. And we are going to save the game. Now you see, these are all our slots for saving the game. I have a slot uh, titled Slave Pens. That was the last time I was playing. So we are going to overwrite Slave Pens. And that is going to be our next episode. So when we get back together next time, we'll go check out the slave pens and see who's in there, and maybe have a little bit more combat in the arena. Thanks for watching.